impressed uh, people and his uh, talent. And you know, we gave him a show. This is actually is this your first show of a whole whole show. Okay. So David Carter. Um, come in. Come in. I, um, I was reading some New York art critics. I was reading some of the articles that were saying there's too much art and there's too many artists here that never say anything like you shouldn't make you shouldn't make art unless you really have to. Now some of us will have different opinions, but as idea of the technology develops, so so can the methods of making art and the ideas that make them. Which brings to the attention of developing one's artistic identity, which is being yourself as you make art, which is where you have to look for um, critical thinking, intellectual anatomy, and making an intellectual anonymous decision in, in that process of making art rather conforming to what other artists are doing. And that could be rather quite a challenge, a challenging journey, a challenge to find the vanguard and the challenge to be intellectually anonymous, and the challenge to find originality, I think. So that's why it's important to be one yourself, you know, the things that you do, the things that you like. For example, I grew up with a martial artist and doing uh, martial arts and, you know, karate, MMA fighting, and so I wanted to merge my art and martial arts with, with my, um, so, um, uh, anyway, recently I went to Iceland to the Reykjavik Art Festival where I discovered the philosophical art movement, which is the convergence, with, and I wrote a book called Perspective, the convergence of art and philosophy. They wanted to use philosophy to formulate their art and artistic ideas. So, some of those artists, for example, Matthew Barney, which you may have heard of, the part of the philosophical art movement. And so, um, when, I, when I study some of the works there, this is what helped me out inspired in Iceland in making this video of our piece here and forming the super spot revolution of revolution. The idea was to converge uh, this, the 60s counterculture with the Euro spy genre of that era. The, the, the uh, revolution of revolution during the 60s was all about um, protesting war, protesting uh, and, uh, the Pentagon, protesting pollution and, and things like that. And so they were putting like flour into guns and things like that and and, order, and then doing all kinds of peaceful protesting. Now they succeeded to some extent but we still have problems like the oil pipeline, and you might have a fascist begun under Trump, perhaps. And so, my theory with that, since there were so many spy films, like your spy films made during the 60s, and there was the counterculture going on, that perhaps maybe the, the counterculture would use an espionage as a form of protest that may be more successful in achieving our goals of more peace and um, you know, stop the pollution and cleaning the air on the water and, the thing, and stop the bomb, the things that they wanted to do. And so I think that the, my theory of that, um, that and learning artistic language, the same thing that coded, decoding artistic language and art. So if you have all the Spy, spy films, uh, the spy TV shows like The Man from Uncle and The Avenger and I Spy and Get Smart and, and other shows like The Smart Squad. Then, you know, there may be a, like a code. You decode that and maybe Earth is sending out signals to distrust that people need to do espionage to protect the planet from corporate, uh, from corrupt corporations and corrupt government and things. And so my show, what my show does is to explore the convert like the uh, philosophical art movement which converges art and philosophy. Uh, I converge the counterculture of the 60s of psychedelic art with the Euro spa. So I converge your thing to explore the assimilation of the counterculture using espionage to try to achieve its goal.
that that is my hopes that the super spy revolution revolution is to uh, promote uh, healthy, peaceful espionage within counterculture to um, to achieve countercultural goals of peace and protesting the war and things. So, uh, so if I would use intel as a spy, I would use art as intel, which is quite, which is a good example. I was inspired when I painted the leprechauns in some of these pieces. I had uh, pajamas, lucky like charm pajamas with a leprechaun on it, which I painted on some of my pieces. But what is so interesting is that actually occurred week, a couple of days before I watched a man from Uncle episode. This is uh, season, season two, episode four, was that only on the was hot. And he pretended to add a phrase and said, actually, I was chasing it all night in my pet Navicom. That was after I painted the pet Navicoms. And so I discovered out of all those questions to come. Uh, this type of artistic language and interactive media and art in which I, uh, I use, uh, in which I use that intel, that espionage. For example, the 60s book, The Map of T-O-M-K, The Map of Tomcat, The Dirty Rod Depriving Gray. It's about a free magic type villain who sells off the gray in uh, Iceland. Yeah, the other secret underground lay on Iceland. What it does, the very sent out a special radiation that prevents people from uh, procreating. This way, he can thin out the human brain so he can start his own master brain and get rid of all the undesirable. Kind of like a, uh, you know, the plot in Moonraker. So, anyway, so this took place uh, in Rebecca Javik and Secret Fordium. So, what I did, I flew to Iceland and uh, I went to see if there were any. Uh, I went to see a little correlation to parallels to what I saw in Iceland and what I saw in this book. And there were actually some similarity. I went to a uh, single port here, the northern coast uh, in Iceland, which is the Hearing Fishing Village. And it, what I saw there was quite very similar. In fact, I thought I would um, be inspired upon by being inspired by the time of ice cream, the ice cream parlor, which I talk about here in this article right here. And then, and um, so I went around to look for some uh, volcano layers, but there's probably a hundred volcanoes in Iceland. So I didn't see any. But what was interesting, I got to use this as intel for spy mission in uh, operation, operation performance art. I, um, I was in Akhanuri in northern Iceland, and I went to a used bookstore looking for intel, and I found this book. Dragon Skin, which is about a skinhead gang. I like what interesting books I bought. It. And later I went to uh, one of those famous outdoor pools in Akhanuri, and uh, I was with swimming, and then after there was a skinhead standing outside the pool, the pool play. Right? I like, there was a skinhead. I bought this book on the same day about the skinhead, and there was a skinhead standing outside. He was bald. He had a jacket and on the back with, with skin heads on the back and uh, he had boots. I'm like, that was a real coincidence. But see, that's the second one I was trying to get at. The um, coincidence and uh, the convergence and coincidence and art and reality and finding them tell for espionage is one of my theory. Not, for example, our uh, Castro theory with uh, Matthew Madison used to predict Castro using math. I have a blog about how Castro Ferrer was art to predict Castro being. For example, Medium, which is a film starring uh, John Connolly, is about this meteors hitting New York, and you'll see a meteor hitting the Twin Towers, which is quite, sim quite similar to a plane hitting the Twin Towers in 911. Anyway, so, um, and so I would use, you know, like for example, the spy cloud tradition. You know, like IALPA, which is uh, a government organization, they have hundreds of research uh, programs in which they try to predict spy craft and all that. That's why we need to use art for a spy craft together. So, that is one of the uh, exploration things in my mind. I have a question. Yeah. <coughs> 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 if I can 
to get it out. <laughs> a lot of your things <coughs> have a high content of uh, the female figure. The what? The female figure. Yes. <coughs> it seems very misogynistic at times. The, the pieces feel like you're um, sort of showing what like some of the, the the good old boy syndrome of females. How do you deal with that in uh, your, it seems like a stream of consciousness kind of way of dealing with, oh I found this and that was a coincidence so I painted this and then I'm going over here. How, how is the female form connected with all of the stream of consciousness that you seem to be into? Well, I'm not female, I'm a male. I know. So I live in a world where a man and a female are really different. They're not the same. And so we deal with that world. That's the way the universe <coughs> You know, a male and female are different and they need to procreate. And so if I deal with a female figure, uh, I'm a man, so basically, you know, you know, I, I, I see, I'm a man, so I see females the way men see females, rather than females as females. Um, this should be the way men are. And so I, um, I, um, I, um, I see, um, I see that, um, I like to see, um, I like, I like seeing women expressing themselves and have a complete liberty and um, freedom of expression and doing what they want. And I have another question. What, what, where does it come from for people your age to look at people my age's past in the 60s and say, wow, that was really, do you, do you look at it that way or am I jumping to conclusions that, you know, like a lot of these images came right from the late 60s, early 70s. And I'm wondering, what is it that you're looking at from my generation to, are you looking to, in, to kind of, what's that all about? <laughs> yeah, let me see how it's like, uh, this is, that was really interesting about the 60s and that they were so upset with the revolution. You know, I understand the world revolution, they would just do it. I mean, I, I'm a revolution for the hell of it. That's exactly what I want. The revolution for the hell of it. We took really to go out there and protest them. To but it didn't them. work. Huh? It didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened after my generation was like a lot yeah. of people that said, you know, fuck love, fuck peace, you know, yeah. let's just make some money. So, how do you deal with that in your work? Well, the thing about it seems that we have more access to see what your generation has seen, like for example, I can, uh, uh, well, with media that becomes available, like we have the internet, I can watch all these US spy films and access all the color culture paraphernalia that may not be made available to everyone except in the form of scenes and everything. So uh, we actually have more access to what is available on the internet. So we have a problem that more broad perspective. You have the same time we come to live a somewhat of a repressed society. Okay. In a way, um, we might be living on a trust fascist regime. And what see that's my perspective that my question is why didn't the sixties use espionage in a common portion? I mean they probably start espionage as banner but it's not necessarily so. It's just all a matter of sign. Okay. Any other questions for David? I have a ton of them, but I want to talk to you <laughs> privately about them. So, uh, is there anything else you want to say before you? Um, no, no, but well, thank you for coming to my show. Yep. And he's going to do a performance of, uh, pretty quick with uh, some DJ music, if you'd like to hang around, then I'm sure he would enjoy that. And you would enjoy that. So, thank you all for coming to Creative Talk Show.